If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Kings chapter 13. You know, it's kind of strange if you think about the, and, and I'm not being superstitious, but you know, we've always said number 13 <coughs> is unlucky, right? Okay, when you go to, if you notice this in the scriptures, it'll be a chapter 13 where something bad happens. It'll, now, I think that's where they got this from. And, and, uh, chapter 26 is 213. And you watch something and you think, well, wonder why that's where people, I think, got that from the Bible that things happened in the Bible like that. And, and maybe not, but. Well, they said it was Hangman Day, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> kind of like Friday the 13th? Yeah, uh, yeah. How about them black cats now? Yes. God sends messages in different ways, and there was a prophet in chapter 13. And, and we just start in verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now Jeroboam, he was the, uh, his hands fixing the weather, he's fixing to go against the prophet that God sent him to him. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born un unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense unto thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand which he put forth against him dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. So he, what he's fixing to do, the prophecy of the Lord has come to him. And he's told him, this is what I want you to do. And this is what's going to happen. And so uh, Jeroboam, who was the king, says, I'm, uh -uh, I'm fixing to stop this. And so he reaches out, and when he does, God grabs his hand, and he stops him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, And treat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before, and the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. Okay, now he's fixing to try to get him to, he's going to pay him back. He's going to say, okay, come eat with me, and let's just, re now I'm going to show you what God told this prophet to do. Okay, this is what he said. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half of thine house, I will not go in with thee, Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord. Now just like he brought a prophecy, right? And it came to pass. He said, God has told me, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. All right, now. He's fixing to go back home. He's obeying God, okay? Now, here, here's where we're tempted a lot of times. We get a word. Here's an old prophet that's fixing to come into his life. He hears about the prophecy. And he says, I'm going to go talk to that young man and find out and talk to him. Now, let me tell you what this old prophet's fixing to do. He's fixing to lie to this man. Now, why? You say, I don't believe what preachers will lie to you. Well, you got, <laughs> listen, people sell out for all kinds of stuff today, okay? And, uh, and, and then he said, uh, so he went, and, and now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done 
that day in Bethel and uh, the words which he had spoken, spoken unto the king, then they told also to their father. And his father said unto them, which way went he? For his sons have seen, had seen which way the, uh, the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came from Judah? And he, and he said, I am. And he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. Now I want you to notice, he's saying it again, what God has told him to do, okay? For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor return again to go by the way that thou camest. Now he's going to say this three different times if you read the whole thing, okay? Then he said unto him, I am a prophet also, as thou art, and an angel. Okay, we're going to get an angel involved in this. Mm -hmm. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him, and did eat bread in the house and drank water. Now, what's going to happen? When God tells you to go a certain way and do a certain thing, is it okay to say, I'm not going to do that? This, this is a miracle. I, I, I mean, I know it's wrong. I, I understand it's wrong. I know what God's Word says. I know what God has written in His Word. But I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm gonna wait. I think an angel spoke to me. I think this old prophet spoke to me. Let me tell you something. When God tells you something, you better obey it. I thought about this a lot of times. Me being a drunkard, I'm tempted to drink. And a lot of times I get to thinking, you know, well, you know, it's the devil come. Anytime somebody's talking to you and it's against God, it's the devil, okay? Well, but then it wouldn't hurt, you know, to take a drink. I mean, after all, it'd be all right. I mean, you know what I mean. God done told me, now wait, hear me. God done told me, don't do that, okay? I can violate that, and I can die. That's what's fixing to happen to him. He is fixing to die because he disobeyed what God told him to do. Let me, let me say this. This has been a, I don't know what's going to happen in this election, but I woke up two or three mornings and I'm I'm praying and I said, Lord, I want an answer from the Lord. I said, Lord, is Trump going to win? I'm just being honest, asking God, you know. And I feel in my in my soul, in my spirit, in my down in here, I'm troubled. Like, no, he's not going to win. I mean, I'm troubled. I said, Lord, is Trump going to win? Oh, Lord, my goodness, if he don't win, I don't know what, I mean, uh, we got to accept whatever happens in this and that. And I asked him again, I said, is Trump going to win? And I'm going to tell you what God told me. I'm going to win. Hmm. Not Trump. I said, okay. He's going to win. He's not gonna Trump. He's going to make that final vote. Yeah. And what, what is God saying? I'm going to win regardless of what happens. Right. But you don't focus on people. You focus on God that made that person and put him there. Now, I'm I'm 100% behind righteousness. And I, I told, uh, they were talking about this morning, different things that were going on. I said, well, I'm going to tell you the way I feel. Elijah, whenever he went before the king, Ahab, he didn't go up there and meet him out around. He took 450 prophets and he said, we're going to prove who God is. And when he did, he killed 450 prophets by himself. Now, what does that say? He didn't put up with stuff. He didn't say, oh, we just don't go along with it. No, we, what are we called to do on this earth? We're called to warn people. Now, God, this, God's warning this man. That's what we are. We are a witness of the grace of God. Uh, uh, let me say this. In Acts chapter 1, Jesus is talking to the church and uh, 
And you know who wrote Acts? Luke. A physician. Some people believe he was a Gentile. Others say, no, he wasn't a Gentile. I would say that all Jews wrote the, would write the book of Acts. That's just me. That's the way I feel. I don't feel like he was a Gentile, but some people believe he was. But he wrote it, and he said, and you shall receive power. Now, what, the, what Jesus told the disciples to do, I want you to listen to me now. He said, you wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Don't go out, don't go out here yet. He said, I know I, I, I've got a calling on your life. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. But he said, you wait until you be endued with power from on high. Now, let me ask you something. What, what's going to happen when, when the power of God comes on you? And you shall be Witness. witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. God says, you're going to do that. Now, let me ask you something. Do we need the anointing of God to do that? Yeah. If we do it in flesh, we just waste it. We're wasting our time, right? Yeah. Well, let me ask you something. Are we filled with the Spirit of God? You have to be just a witness. To witness you do. Yeah. That's exactly right. right. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you something. Do you have a problem witnessing? I don't. I don't know. But I'm saying, do you have a problem witnessing? If you do, it's because you have not received the power of right. To witness. That's our fault. That's not God's fault. God said, if you ask me, I, I'll give you, any, I, I'll especially give you the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And uh, there, there's a lot of, that, there's always been a lot of controversy. What happened in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit came? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them others, right? Now, is that Bible or not? No. Okay. Yeah. So it shouldn't be strange that if a person would speak in tongues or do whatever, but you don't like speaking tongues to be saved, but what, why, why were they filled with the Spirit? Why, why, why did the Holy Spirit come on in and was speaking tongues? What was the purpose in it? There were people there that could not understand the language. Right. They're from different countries. Right. And so when they spake in tongues, people heard them in their language. Their language. Right. How amazing is that? Now, a lot of people, and, and we've had people come to church, and I agree 100% with a lot of people, have a prayer language that they don't, they don't get out in public and do it. They have, they have a prayer language between them and God. It's in their spirit. They are pray, praying to God. Right. And this is what people do all the time. There are millions and millions of people that speak in tongues and talk, and talk within themselves to God. It's not, it's not something to be showy or pushy or... Do you, uh, uh, speaking in tongues, I think is a gift for it is some gift. people today. Yes. I don't think everybody has that gift. That's what it says. It says, but it does say, do all speak in tongues? And the answer to that is no. No. No, they don't. I'd like to tell you something that happened okay. to me. Uh, I bought a storage building here a couple months ago. And the guy I bought it from me, I went in his office and he had a bunch of Christian stuff on his wall and everything. And I mean, we yes. right off, we got to talk about that, you know. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, I got to talk about my headaches. Uh, I, he could tell I felt bad, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, well, can I pray for you? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right off the bat, you know. And so he stood up and I did too, you know. And he, put his hand on my shoulder and everything, you know, and he went to pray for me, and then for a few seconds there, he said some stuff speaking in tongues. Uh -huh. uh, and then I found out he was a uh, uh, Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't have no problem with it. I don't either. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, now, I've only had like, in two months, I've only had like one migraine since then. Praise God. Uh, he, uh, he and I, we text back and forth. Amen. Time. That's it. And uh, so since then, I've been over there two or three times because of the business with the storage building and all of that. And uh, yeah, he has a he had a relationship problem with this lady that he's dating and all, you know. And 
I said, what can I pray for you? So I did. You know, Amen. I don't know. We just had this texting back. That's there. right. But, but there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with, I mean, no. people have different no. gifts. We don't criticize those that have <clears throat> gifts from God. That's God's <clears throat> gift. But, but, my, it's it's not our gift. but it's neither do they criticize us for not. No, that's right. 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 And the reason people have such a hard time with speaking in tongues is because they have seen people that have spoken in tongues right. and they acted so silly right. and out of sorts that people Kathy say, and I, okay. Kathy and I went to the uh, Sydney God Church over there talking mm -hmm. with the big crosses. Uh -huh. And I've never seen such a, a show in all my life yes. that they do over there. I don't, I don't go for that. Right. right. Um, and to me, that's wrong. Uh, we yeah. need to, as uh, uh, Tanner mentioned, is do everything decently and in order. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people, we had a lady that was, uh, we consider a very godly lady. Right. That, and she did. She spoke in tongues. She lives in Texas now. They come to church for a long time. Bonnie well, she's and her my, my good friend. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She's the assembly of God. She was the assembly of God, but she came to church out here. And she is, yeah. and Mr. Ware, and... Uh, she just still my good friend. Right. Yes, right. yes. When my daddy was dying, uh, I mean within like a couple of weeks, uh, he was in the hospital getting a blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. And he he don't know remember this or anything. I told him about it, but he rattled off some stuff up there one night in that hospital. Some of the prettiest stuff I've ever heard. I didn't understand. You didn't know word. what he was doing. Uh -uh. You didn't understand. Uh -uh. And he he didn't either. I told but it was him in the spirit. It wasn't just mumbo jumbo stuff. I mean, it it was pretty. Right. I had no clue what it was. Right. But I, I, I never will forget that. So I, See, John, when he wrote the, wrote the book of Revelation, I thought about this. He said, "I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I yeah. was in the spirit." Yeah. There's a difference between being in the flesh and being in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, Wayne, was you going to say something? I was just going to say, uh, in uh, 2 Timothy, Paul was telling Timothy, he was talking about order in the church. Mm -hmm. And that's what 2 Timothy is, is. If anybody wants to look in 2 Timothy, it shows. It shows, doesn't it? Exactly. It shows. It. That's right. It teaches it. He teaches. was teaching, Paul, uh, Paul was teaching Timothy to take over and to be orderly. That's right. But what did Paul say about that? I'd rather speak with, uh, what does that scripture go in the... Yeah, well, he'd rather, you know, where people could discern what he was saying. Right. But, but Paul said, I speak in tongues more than y'all. He said, I, but that's I'd just rather, a gift that God gave yeah. me. Now, the reason he had revelation from God. Now, there's nothing wrong with get, we get revel, how, how, but there's get another part to that God. scripture, but I'd rather speak a thousand words or something in... Right, in Corinthians, right. Yeah. Yeah. No. And he deals with that. He deals, and, and what we need to understand is we need to be filled with God's Spirit to be witnesses. Right. It's that simple. I mean, it's not, it's, we don't make a show out of this stuff. If you make a show, that's not God. Right. God's not interested in promoting us. He would promote Jesus. Right, I mean, Only Jesus. Yeah, right. I mean, and okay. we don't promote tongues, and we don't promote uh, other things. We don't promote preachers. We, yeah. don't, we promote what Jesus has taught us right. and what he's done in our life. Yeah. Now, Peter Peter was the leader. Now, I want you to think about something. Now, this guy here, let me tell you what this guy is going to do. He's fixing to die. God is going to send a lion. You know why God sent that lion out there to kill him? He told him what to do, and he didn't do it. He said, that's pretty rough, ain't it? God warned him. He said it three times. I've got to go back the way. I can't go back the same way I came. Now, this is what a lot of people do. Now, I want you to hear me this morning. You go back the way you used to be, you're in trouble with God. Yeah. You better pay attention to what God's calling you out of now, and don't go back into it. You understand? Now, we're all tempted and we all backslide. We do things that's not, you know. But God says, when you come out, you stay out. You do what I tell you to do and you follow me. Now, what we've lost today is the fear of God. 
And I know people say, well, you're not supposed to be afraid of God. That's right. You're not supposed to be afraid of him. But I'm going to tell you something. When you're going to stand before him one day, you're going to wish you had, you, you're going to know. You, you're going to, what you're going to do, you're going to go, hey, God, I'm, I'm glad I'm here. And you, I'm glad I'm, God, God ain't going to put up with your ignorance. God, God, God said, uh-uh. God doesn't uh -uh. like a proud man. Oh, he ain't going to let pride enter in. That's why the gate was narrow. Because most people have got money, and we've got too much money a lot of times. Is that right? We've got money, 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 money. That, and that money will cause you to go away from God if you're not careful. There are so many traps. But here's this man. Uh, okay, listen to verse. Uh, then, of all the things in the world, wouldn't you hate for a man that lied to you to prophesy to you and tell you you're going to die? And that's what happened. The old prophet said, okay. Uh, and it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord. Now this is old prophet now. And hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come under the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had uh, brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by and the lion and the lion stood by the carpet. Now, do you think that was a miracle? Mm -hmm. What not a miracle that the lion, and here's this horse, mew, and, and they done they killed the prophet. Now, I want to ask you something. Was that a pretty good warning? Do you, you think that got people's attention? Yeah. Now, I want you to think about this just a little bit. Here's, here's this. They load this prophet up on this horse, and they march him into town. Man, what happened to him? Mm. He disobeyed the Lord. Why? Why did Why did that happen? Well, he disobeyed the Lord. God told him what to do. He was a prophet of God. He was a call to do this thing, and he did this. Now, do you think Do you think the king got the message? Now, what you think about it? Now, do you think that would get your attention? That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Now, go down. Verse 33. I'm going to show you what happened. After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people, priest of the high places. Whoever would, he consecrated him and became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing became sin under the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. Now here's what happens. When you start, here, this is what happens when you get hirelings in the pulpit. And we've got a lot of hirelings. We've got people that's just filling the pulpit for money. It's, it, that's a battle all preachers fight. But we, we right. fight stuff. We have to be careful about pride. There's different avenues that the devil will try to trick you up. There's things that will happen in life. And we have opportunities. Now, let me ask you something. Uh, have you ever said something and didn't continue with it? You said, Lord, I'm going to do this, but you didn't do it. Yep. We do that all the time. Yep. Thank God I'm learning that when I say something, I say, but... Lord willing, I'll do this and that. It's better to say that than don't make God promises because you're just breaking. Yeah. I don't care who you are. That's just examples. Uh, we're going to fail. You're going to fail. I'm telling you, there's going to be, and you say, well, wait a minute. When God, God puts his finger on something and tells you don't do that, he means don't do that. I, I've seen people uh, leave this earth and I'm thinking 
I don't know about that. That scares me. It does me. It just scares me. I mean, I say, Lord, ooh. Now go to Acts just a minute. I want to show you something here that, that, that I feel like God showed you. It was amazing to me. Look in Acts 5 and verse 14. I want you to start in verse 14 now. Now pay attention to what the Bible says. I encourage you to study the Word, know the Word, because if you're going to miss God's best if you don't study the Word of God. Now, I'm going to tell you the way most people look at God. He is the big Santa Claus of y'all know that is just, woo But he ain't no Santa Claus, you hear me? God is like, you know what? The term, God is love, right? Okay, now that's not the way we look at love, but he is love. Right. The word that, God, that the Bible uses more than any word about God is holy. God is holy. And if we, that's why when you come to God and you have sinned, you don't make excuses. You just say, Lord, all you got to do is be honest. That's all. You you ain't you ain't got to put on no show. You ain't got to just say, God, I'm on. I, I I failed. I meant to do this. I failed. I'm sorry. When all the hell breaks loose and everything's hitting at you in every way, there's times that I get so disappointed and I think, Lord, my goodness, I, this is just horrible. Lord, look at all the stuff that's happening, and uh, you begin to see people die around you, and you think, Lord, my goodness, this is just all this stuff is happening, and all this pressure's on us, and God, please help us. We got a rock that we can go to and say, Lord. Now I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why Jesus, when he was on the cross, you remember that they put a a, a sponge, yeah, up to him, yeah. and he wouldn't take it. You know why? Because he was touched. Now listen to this. In all points, like as we are. Yet without sin. He tasted what you have tasted in life. He goes, he knows everything you've gone through. He knows what it is to lose loved ones. He knows what it is to see all this stuff happen. He understands your heartbreak. He understands when you don't believe. He understands and he draws you to him. And he's on your side and he will get you through this. Now here's here's what we've got to be careful about. Always live by faith. Go to Romans 8 and 28. When you don't understand, you can just say that all things work together for good to those that love God. Now, I'm, I'm, this is the time I need to say this. I'm going to say that when Peter, Peter denied the Lord three times. Yep. Three times. Denied the Lord. You say, how do you think Peter felt? He couldn't believe it. He wept bitterly. But he had to meet Jesus. Here he comes. Down there, Peter's down there fishing. You know what he was wearing? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> he was out fishing, dicking. I never fishing. He said, I don't fish that way. I wouldn't either. <laughs> That's what Peter was doing. And they were out there and he was done fishing all night. You know what they caught? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> you know why he didn't catch nothing? When you ain't catching nothing, there's a reason you ain't catching nothing. And God says, okay, what are you doing down there, Peter? Uh, Peggy, hey, he says, hey, Peggy, have you caught anything? And they listen, and John says, that's Jesus. Peter jumps out of the boat, he gets his clothes, and he's going to bank. Jesus, they go over. Jesus said, no, nah, no, was that the time when he said, throw your net on the other side and just drug the fish in? Yeah. All right. When you go with Jesus, now hear me. You're going to get your net full. It's going to be things that's going to happen on this earth that you can't explain to people. God's going to be with you and bless you and encourage you, strengthen you. When nobody else would care, he cares. And he comes up and he has to give an account of himself. Peter, now I want to ask you, what, what did Jesus ask you? Do you love me? Do you love me? That's a good question, isn't it? Do you love me? Pretty simple. Yeah, it's simple, isn't it? Yeah, Lord, you know what I do. You know what he his head was down. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, or I, you know, I, 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 you know, they said, now, let me, he said, feed my sheep. Now, what was his plan? God had a plan for fly, even after it failed. Mm-hmm. He said, feed my sheep. Peter, do you love him? Great plan. Great plan. Right. Yeah, to answer this. Because he denied him. Okay, so he said, okay, yeah. Now, at this time in Peter's life, how do you, you know he felt kind of ashamed. And, so in the book of Acts, he, guess who gets the message? The message to the world. Guess who preaches the message? Peter. Peter. Mm-hmm. Why would God use such a God-denying and, and matter of fact, Paul had to correct him one time. He came down there where Paul was at, and Paul said, listen, you, you go over here buddying with the Jews. And he said, when the Gentiles come, you'll buddy with them. And he rebuked Peter. Peter, Peter made a mistake. He made mistakes on and on and on. But let me tell you, let me, this was amazing to me when I saw this. Here's Peter. Now, this is going to, I'm going to, we may not get down to read all this, but here's Peter. And there's people coming in by the droves, getting healed. Now you tell me what it was that was healing the people. Jesus was healing them. Peter's shout. If they could just get down to the shout. You say, Oh, you gotta have faith for that. Ain't you? Do you understand that when you fail, God can forgive you? And and see, Peter didn't know all this was healed. He didn't understand that. He just thought, well, I'm a mess and I'm dead. No, wait a minute, you're not a mess. God's got a great plan in your life. He just needs you to come to submit and uh, give yourself to God. Present your body a living sacrifice, your body, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now let's read verse 14. I want you now you tell me, you don't look back, but you tell me what you think would bring about what I'm fixing to read to you. And believe me, <coughs> for the more added to the church, people was getting saved by the hundreds or thousands or whatever. Multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shout of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Then came also a multitude out of the cities round about under Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed every one. Now why in the world, if you didn't know the book of Acts, if you didn't read up above that, why did all that happen? They were in one accord. Huh? In one accord? I don't know. I'm in one accord? Now, don't you listen to me. Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost 